probably one of my favorite cars I've ever driven. So Grayson and I imported a Subaru Forester SDI just like this one, not a Type M, um, into Vancouver probably about a year ago through Market Brave Auto. And uh, we brought that in, it was an automatic transmission. We kind of dailied it and used it as a film vehicle, road trip car. Uh, we took it to Kelowna and back a few times. That's like a four hour drive. We kind of used it for stuff like that for like, I don't know, three or four months. Uh, and then we got rid of it, but it's so good to finally get back behind the wheel of one of these cars. Patrick uh, over in Kelowna was kind enough to bring out his mint condition, auction grade 4.5 actually. Yeah, Super Forester SDI Type M with a five speed. Ours was an auto, this is the first time I'm driving a Forester SDI with a manual. Just a cool comparison to see how it drives. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, this is fairly stock. All it's got done basically is coilovers and obviously a muffler delete. As you can hear, it's really loud. And Patrick is one of the few people that we have on the channel who actually runs a radar detector. Super useful. It's got the two liter Boxer 4 up front. Putting out about 250 horsepower. There's a nice backfire there. <laughs> Love the boxers for pretty much all their engine characteristics, uh, the amount of torque they make, the amount of power you can make out of them, uh, and if you keep them relatively stock, reliability is an option, I guess. It's just the smoothest car. I mean, we are going fast and comfortable you know you cruise at this speed and the car just soaks up everything it's it's honestly it's kind of just like a train it's kind of like a freight train it it just barrels down the road and there's enough weight behind it where it's not popping around and bumping around even with coilovers on a kind of bouncy road it stays very stable it's very compliant uh, in the suspension and uh, it's got like a little bit of body roll, you know, that kind of adds to the wagonness of it. It just sticks to the road. It's so smooth. It's got so many comfortable, you know, touches to the interior. It's got a bunch of suede everywhere here. Uh, the back seats have armrests that come down. Um, it's just, the features in this car from Japan right out of the box are awesome. This is number 96 out of 800 of uh, the Type M's, I believe. 400 uh, stayed in Japan originally, and then you know a couple hundred and were sent off to um, Australia and New Zealand, and then the other few hundred were sent off to the UK. And now they're legal to import into Canada, so Patrick's done just that. This looks way better in white than ours did, and it's lowered, and it's just got such a nice presence to it. This is probably my favorite Subaru. And that sounds hilarious to say. I've driven, you know, 400 wheel horsepower SDIs before, Impreza SDIs, but this is just the usability and the hatch, the, the fact that it's a hatch and stuff. Yeah, it feels faster than the auto, definitely. And it's just more engaging. The manual is the way to go for these. I mean, they made a lot of Forester SDIs in auto. The one thing about this car though is it does suck back quite a bit of fuel. Just kind of counterintuitive to the whole let's have a fast wagon with a manual uh, ethos about this car. Um, but, you know, it's an STI. What, what the heck are you going to expect? Not expecting good fuel economy out of this, let's be honest. Plenty of torque from 3,000 RPM. The mid-range is really where this car loves to be, uh, and that's the best characteristic of any daily, is just mid-range punch. Well, low end too, but um, if you really want to get up and go, I mean, mid-range punch, really. From five to seven, the power doesn't really build any further, it doesn't feel like. The turbo's not massive on this thing, but it spools up really quickly, and you know, between three and kind of five, or three and 6,000 RPM, 
Um, honestly, even like 2,000 RPM, the turbo spools up really quickly, uh, which is really good. Like 2,500 RPM spooled by three, right? So uh, you, you do get backfires too. Uh, but yeah, you do get a lot of feedback uh, and you do get a lot of mid-range torque, which is great. So Patrick has set this in the softest, softest suspension setting for me uh, on his dampers. Ooh, that is a nice R34 sitting in the middle of a field. I don't see that every day. Um, yeah, it's basically in the softest setting right now. Not as comfortable and as daily drivable as ours was uh, with the completely stock suspension. Doesn't have the ride height as the stock one. Um, and Patrick, I think, is uninsuring this car over the winter, which is kind of counterintuitive for a Subaru. But at the same time, he wants to build it into a show car. And this is like, it's got a plaque from Subaru that says 96 out of 800. Like it is a limited edition car, like a legit limited edition run. So uh, am I opposed to the fact that he's making a show car out of it? Not really. I mean, it's cool that, you know, he's going to pre preserve this really good condition Subaru. Uh, and that's what he loves about it. So more power to him. not too obnoxious with the muffler delete either uh, it's actually pretty solid makes a really lovely noise easy to heel toe these cars are just really easy to drive clutch is super easy very forgiving i love wagons i kind of do like wagons i had a 91 grand marquee if i can somehow make a wagon out of the mr2 i probably would like they're just super practical uh and or, I don't know, they're good. <laughs> oh yeah. The initial bite of the brakes too, one of the most surprising things about this car. It's got four piston calipers up front, two in the back. And it just dips in and corners. There's no hesitation. Good tires obviously help with that as well. But man. Yeah, I would totally buy another one of these, not gonna lie. Love it. Stock, uh, really aggressive Recaro seats actually in this. Um, and as well, it's got a stock Momo steering wheel. So realistically, I mean, this was Subaru's all out attempt at the time to make the ultimate go fast wagon uh, slash hatchback. But I mean, this is a legit wagon. This is kind of the last true wagon that Subaru made, I think. Now I'm trying to trying to think of if they really made anything else that was even comparable to this uh, afterwards in terms of a true wagon. I mean, the legacy as well, but I'm sad the wagon market is lost. I really am. And it just, it just dips into the corner so well. You would, I would never expect this. If I knew nothing about cars and I looked at this and I was like, I'm just going to dip into that corner going like 90 kilometers an hour where I would normally go 50, it, it's not gonna make it, but it, it does. 12 kilometers an hour, 13, 14, 15, 16 kilometers an hour. It's no slouch, okay? It's no slouch at all. It's a fast car. To me, this is a highway cruiser. The owner of this car is actually about to drive to um, Kelowna later this afternoon to go home that's like a four hour drive. That's exactly what this car was made for. And we did that drive multiple times in hours. And I mean, you're allegedly cruising just at the end of the speedometer, right? These things are limited to 180 kilometers an hour with the speedo. And you can sit there allegedly on a closed course and just cruise and you would never know. It's, it's like a modern AMG car in that respect, right? You get into a modern AMG car and you're cruising at, you know, 130, 100, yeah, about 130 miles an hour, and it feels like you're doing 60, right? <laughs> oh yeah, that's loud. Sometimes it's better just to let the car do the talking. If you 
can pick one of these up for a decent price. You can easily get one of these, uh, or at least the normal STI. I'm not sure about the Type M with the manual, but I know you can get you know an automatic transmission, Forester STI from between five and seven thousand dollars Canadian. So that's like four and a half thousand US. Dirt cheap for what you're getting. It's it's awesome. I mean, you're not finding an Impreza STI for four thousand dollars. So to get in one of these for that kind of money, the type this Type M is probably a little over ten grand. I'm gonna guess. Uh, and you're getting a lot of car for 10 grand uh, for this. But seriously, thank you, Patrick, so much for bringing out your car. This was great six months later to finally get back in a Forester STI. I missed ours so much uh, and the manual. It really makes the car. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hit us up on Instagram and Facebook and you can see what we're filming, you know, weeks in advance. Um, and yeah, listen to the Roads and Travels podcast every Wednesday. Uh, where we talk about, we'll probably talk about this car a little bit more at length. We'll get Grayson's input because he daily the Forester as well when we had it. Uh, and yeah, we just talk about cars with friends and have a good time. So join us there, iTunes, Shout Engine, and uh, we will see you guys next time.